Senator Weta Muti is best known as one of the leaders of Hindra. He led his followers through a number of confusing shifts, including years in exile and an eight-month spell in the Barisan government after GE13. This time around, he's determined to deliver and has found himself with some broader issues as a minister in the Prime Minister's department in charge of national unity and social well-being. This is your second spell in, uh, in government. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish this time around? I've been given the uh, unit in charge of the Indian community and I've also been tasked with uh, um, um, taking care of the minority community in this country and I, I feel it's an honour. And I think now I'm able to do better, uh, not only for the Indian community, but also for the minority communities. I've engaged the Orang Asli, I've engaged the Siam community, and uh, I'm yet to meet the other communities as well. But uh, I'm certain I'll be able to assist them. I'm certain I'll be able to advocate their uh, real issues. I think Still, uh, the root of his struggle has been to help poor and marginalised members of the Indian community. Many have said, uh, that I'm uh, race-centric, uh, concentrating on the Indian community. I do admit uh, that I advocate the rights of the marginalised Indian community, but uh, it, I think it is a wrong perception to think that uh, uh, I am basing my, my, my struggle on the Indian community alone. I would say the Indian community is the most marginalised community in this country. Uh, we have been uh, sidelined from the mainstream economy of the country for far too long. And normally in a democratic country, the majority race takes pride in championing the plight of the minority communities. Uh, it is really unfortunate in our country, uh, the majority does not speak for the minority community. Therefore, I have taken upon myself uh, um, to uh, raise the plight of the Indian community. Uh, whether it was the previous government or the current government, my stand is the same. Uh, I think the uh, Indian community have a unique problem that is not faced by others. What sort of concrete steps would you like to see being taken by this government to help the community? Um, I, I, I would uh, like to see that the government carry out uh, socio-economic uh, programs uh, which are specific and targeted especially to these uh, displaced estate community. They are no longer in the estates, they are probably now in uh, flats and so forth. Um, um, they need to be helped and uh, we are working on programs to, to uh, increase their income so that they are not trapped in the poverty uh, uh, bracket. So this is your second spell in government. You were actually uh, part of the government from 2013 for just slightly less than a year. Eight months. Can you tell us uh, about that time and why you decided to resign? 2013, striking a deal with Barisan was not an easy thing for me. Um, but we have to go back in history in 2008, uh, after the Hindraf rally, um, you know, we mobilized the people to support uh, opposition and bloc, including PAS. And when the opposition then won big, uh, we thought the major problems could be solved, especially involving the demolition of Hindu temples. And we thought our voice would be heard in parliament and in, in the four states that Pakatan ruled then, we thought that you know the land issues can be solved. But to our dis disappointment, it wasn't. So in 2013, uh, after I returned, I uh, prepared uh, a, a blueprint uh, for the Indian community and I uh, engage both parties, but unfortunately at that point of time, despite 22 meetings with Pakatan Raya, then we were unsuccessful. Um, on the other hand, uh, Barisan engaged us and they offered to rectify the past mistakes. Um, of course, I did not believe them unless they were willing to put it in writing, which they did. Uh, despite knowing that I will get brick bats, I did it for their sake and I went in and I was promised a unit uh, and I was promised budget but nothing was, was forthcoming. Uh, despite my many warnings, uh, many reminders, um, the government did not budge so I had to leave and I left. One of the things that's going on now in New Malaysia is uh, leaders of the previous regime are suddenly being called up to MACC and, uh, and facing courts. Is that, is that a surprise to you? 
No, no, I think I think it's a known fact in this country that uh, most of these leaders were involved in many uh, wrongdoings. You know, the people were unhappy with it. I think with now now that they have been they are being called up. Initially people were quite anxious um, that no action were taken, but I think now people are uh, beginning to see that uh, you know uh, slowly these people are being dragged um, to the courts and they are being questioned by MECC and the police. Um, um, I, I think uh, you know um, people want to see justice at, at the end of the day. For most of our interview, Vedamurthy has been businesslike and full of determination. But our conversation takes a surprisingly emotional tone when I ask him about family time. I, I lost that quality time. I only have uh, one child, one daughter. And uh, I think I've neglected her. To, to be very honest, I, I've neglected her uh, from the age of probably three. How old is she now? She's 16 now. And uh, um, well, she grew up with her mother. Uh, and uh, it's sad, you know, this is, uh, sometimes, you know, that's a price uh, I think we have to pay. I think sometimes in activism, one of the things is have a better country for our children. <laughs> yeah, that's what I keep telling her. Um, the, the little time that I spend with her. Uh, I've told her that uh, that I do things uh, so that many other children uh, will be able to benefit.